Hello everybody, welcome to me and my golf. In today's video, we're gonna be explaining the difference between long irons and short irons. Oh, that is all over it. We're gonna show you exactly how to do that. Let's take charge of your game. So thank you for joining us. We are here at Purton Park Golf Club. This is where we coach every week. Now today, we're talking long irons versus short irons. This is a question from actually one of you guys, Francois Lamont, he posted, can you talk about the difference between the two? Now, we want your feedback, we want your questions, we want you to fuel us with the content. So please post your questions about your game down below and we will choose some people to answer in a video. Now, Pierce, long irons versus short irons. Now, the yes. fact that we're gonna separate these and talk about them differently means there's a difference. There's a different yeah. purpose between the two. Let's just talk about that before we sort of kick it, kick it off. Yeah, I think, look, what we're looking for when we're looking at a long iron is we're talking about getting speed so we can get the golf club to perform. We'll talk about that later. But also with the short iron, then we're talking about, well, actually, it's more about dialing in the distance and the accuracy. So it's more about getting into a smaller area almost. Okay, so the fact that there, there's a different purpose in the shots means there's actually difference in technique, which of we're course. going to go through today and explain some of the differences in the setup and how we swing yes. and then give you guys some very simple, practical drills that you can actually go and work on and, and help your game really. So let's start, Pierce, with just the setup. How does the setup differ between a long We'll start with the long iron. Okay, so we've got a long iron here. We're going to talk about the lower body specifically on this as well. So what we're going to do, ball position is the first thing we want to talk about. Now, we get a load of questions about ball position. You know, where should it be? And there are different ways that you can do this, but we like a really... A uh, simple, concise way in what we call a constant ball position. In that, this golf ball here, we can now see is a club head inside from my lead heel. And we're going to keep it there for all of the clubs, but we're going to keep that ball position, sorry, a club head inside from the heel. Now, this is where it differs because when we go into the long iron, we know that we want to get some stability to, because we've got more speed in the golf swing. But what we're looking for as well is we're looking for a higher ball flight. So we want that ball forward relative to our feet. So if we move my, sorry, if I move my right foot into a wider position, which is great for stability, it also allows me to get my upper body more behind the golf ball, which is going to allow me to hit the golf ball up in the air. So you just moving over that way slightly just moves the sternum a little bit more behind the golf ball. Absolutely. That'll, that'll change the angle of attack, but also it engages the legs because we've got this nice wide stance. Indeed, indeed. And then the last thing that we want to talk about then in the lower body is the weight distribution. So 50% in the lead and 50% in the trail foot. Okay, so pretty simple there. Let's go into the short iron and how that differs. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave that foot there now because I still want to have this club head inside the lead heel. This is the constant ball position we're talking about. But instead of having this wide stance that we need for the speed, obviously in the long iron and getting the height, I'm going to bring this foot in. So straight away now, if I narrow the stance, we can now see that it gets my spine and head more towards the golf ball. And by the time I then put 55 to 60% of the weight into this lead foot, you can now see, I need to move in closer, you can now see that I'm a lot more on top of the golf ball and the loft is really going to be getting the golf ball in the air and I am going to create those conditions, etc. And the fact that we just move the legs closer and it sort of almost tells the brain that we don't need the legs as much. We're not looking to create that speed. Remember, the short irons is more about controlling that speed. Okay, well, let's talk about as well, Pierce. Let's, one of the questions that we get asked a lot with the, in terms of the upper body is that, what should the spine be like? Should we have this spine leaning away just like a driver? Just talk about that for us. Yeah, so we've, we mentioned this drill a lot um, with the driver called the K-bomb, where we actually get your spine angle tilted behind the golf ball to help you hit up on the golf ball. That is very specific just for the driver. With a long iron, as we do with a short iron, we want to hit down on the golf ball. So you don't need to create these angles in your setup. They'll be naturally created by the fact that your right hand is lower than your left. But with all the irons, we want to feel as though there is a descending blow. With a long iron, it's less of a descending blow than it would be for a short iron, but there still is that descending blow. So we're not really looking to create any massive tilt with Definitely that spine. Not. Really important that you just understand that. And then posture, one sort of final thing to finish it off. Yeah, I mean, look, we get asked all the time again, we get a lot of questions, don't we? But it's about, well, what is, should I stand taller for a long iron? Well, yes, you should stand taller for a long iron, but it's only down to the virtue of the length of the golf club. So if I've got a shorter club here, you can see I'm more bent forward, a little bit more leg flex, a longer club, I'm naturally going to stand up. So again, let the club dictate the posture angles for you. Okay, 
So let's say you hit a shot then, Pierce, with this long line, and just talk about a little bit the scenario. Again, we talked about the purpose of yes. creating speed. Talk us through the shot. Okay, so there's two things that we need to look at with the purpose of the long line. We've already mentioned the one already, which is the speed in order to get the club to perform. So basically what we mean by that is the long iron is harder to get up into the air. It's harder to get a natural gapping in distances between the clubs. So we need that speed to do that, obviously. The second thing is, well, this shot here, you know, I've got 200 plus yards. The last thing I want to be doing is hunting down flags. The middle of the green is absolutely fine. So if I've got a 30 yard wide green and the flag's on the right hand side, I am not going for that flag. I'll only go for the middle of the green. So there's less emphasis on accuracy here, a little bit more emphasis on speed and just finding the target really, as opposed to getting, like you say, chasing down flags. Okay, let's hit a shot then it. we'll go into technique pierce. Okay, so middle of the green will be fine on here, on this one. A lovely strike That's that nice. was, Pierce. Very nice. Yeah, left side of the green, I'll take that. Very nice. So before we get into that, I hope you're enjoying the video, guys. If this is useful, please just hit the like button and subscribe for videos like this every week. We're gonna produce these videos to help your game. Okay, let's talk about the technique side of things yes. then, Pierce, and talk about the difference. Let's start with the long iron and then we'll break it down into the short iron as well. Okay, so there's two main things that we're gonna be doing with the long iron and the short iron. They're very similar to each other in that this is a certain area of the goal swing we're talking about. So basically what we're looking for to help us get this speed, yes, of course, we want the body working well, but we wanna make sure that we get a full release of the club head through impact. So by that, the toe, Passing over the heel through impact is very important. If we think of Tiger Woods when he's hitting a, an iron shot, I mean, best iron player ever probably, you can see that he has these knuckles showing underneath on his glove hand there. He is not like this. So he is getting that toe end passing over the heel. So he's getting a full release. Then if you continue up into the finish, we can see that I will have a full finish. So when you're hitting a long iron, we want that full finish. Again, it tells us that we're putting all the speed in that we can. So the main difference here is how we're releasing that club, that release pattern. So let's go through a drill then, Pierce, that's gonna help the guys at home maybe feel the difference between this and a short iron. Okay, very, very simple. You can do this as a practice swing if you want to before you, before you hit your golf shot on the golf course, but trail hand only. So I'm just gonna have some swings and just notice what you see when I do this. So I'm making sure I have a full back and through swing. But you'll see when I'm doing this, obviously the right hand is rotating the club. But if I slow it down through the hitting area now, you can see the right hand is doing all the work, obviously. You can see, sorry, you can see the toe end passing over the heel. But then as I sort of get to this area here, where the forearm is parallel to the ground, the grip of the club is very much pointing towards the target line. That tells me I'm getting that full release and turn of the club as I go through. Definitely, what I like about this as well, Pierce has sort of got this L shape here where he's sort of reset the wrists on the way through is allowing the club to, as you mentioned, release past there. But really, really this is important because he's allowing the speed to go through into this area. And as he does this, like you say, the club face is closing and he sort of resets that golf club on the way through. I mean, you can actually hit golf balls doing this as well. You know, it takes a bit of time maybe to get used to it, maybe start with a short time, but that is a, you know, it's a really good drill to get that feeling of getting that full release. Okay, well, let's hit one more shot and then we'll go into the short iron. And again, when Pierce hits this shot, just notice how Pierce um, works that club on the way through and how he finishes the shot here. He's gonna have this nice full finish at the end. You can see if he holds that there, that club is finished nicely over his lead shoulder. I didn't see the shot, Pierce. Oh, yeah, it's pretty that. straight. It's actually working the way towards the flag now. Very nice. Take that one. Very nice. Okay, right. Two good shots there. Let's go into the short iron. So again, we're talking about the release pattern, the differences. Okay, so what? Again, with the long iron, lots of release, full finish. With the short iron, we're talking about actually a more passive release through the hitting area and then a more curtailed finish when we're hitting the shot. So from here, as I'm swinging through, I'm not really feeling that I'm getting that full release so much. It's that hold off feeling, almost like playing a punch maybe, but the club face you can see is a lot less active as I'm going through. Notice where the club is pointing now. The shaft of the club is pointing more behind me, not like the long iron out in front of me. And then when I finish the shot, it's definitely short. And now if we look at this here, I've got my shadow down here. It looks like Tommy Fleetwood. A little bit, maybe not quite as good as Tommy. taller actually. maybe, but yeah. <laughs> so that, that very much like Cattell finish. And the difference between this is, look, when we, are, when we have a short iron in our hands, we want to be more accurate. We can be a little bit more aggressive on the flags if we wanted to, and we're really sort of looking to hit it a specific number. We've got much more control with these shots. So that's really the purpose of why we're doing this. Let's do that again, Pierce. I just want to show through impact. Just go slow for me on the way through, just to sort of this area here for me. Hold it there now. The difference now between here, 
we can't see the grip underneath his glove underneath the right hand whereas with the long iron like we saw Tiger big difference here so the club face is so much less um, aggressive on the way in th through in terms of the rotation and you can see that finished position there okay very nice okay let's just talk through the drill then Pierce okay so what we're going to do is and this is again a great drill you can do as a practice swing you can do it in the office because you're not going to damage anything so choke down the golf club and place it across your lead side now I've just got it resting on my belt but it's just resting on your lead side now from there, do a backswing. Then as you swing down, the objective is don't let the shaft or the grip hit you. So I'm swinging down, don't let it hit you, don't let it hit, don't let it hit, don't let it hit. And good. look, as you can see, as a result of that, the face is rotating a lot less. It's a little bit more passive. We can see the shaft pointing behind me and that shaft never gets anywhere near hitting me. And I'm into that Tommy Fleetwood finish again. Love this here, how this shaft now is pointing behind Pierce. And this is one thing that we see a lot with the best players in the world. They all have this shot and when we finish here, we have the back, um, the logo on the glove facing behind where with a long iron shot, we tend to see that it's a little bit more there really. So very different, very different sort of technique with these long to short irons, but great drill to help you feel the difference. And if you combine these two, you've got the, the right hand release with this one here, it's, uh, it certainly makes a big difference. And you can, you can do this with some speed as well. You can really do this with some speed. And if you're someone who early releases the club as well, you know, scoops down, hits the ground before the golf ball, it's a really good drill for you You can have some sore well. ribs. Okay, yeah, well, let's, let's hit the shot then, Pierce. Yeah. Again, a little bit more control here. We're going to make 200 yards with a 9-iron. Nine Not quite. Okay. And would, would you say there's a difference in speed and intention here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, think of this. If you're hitting a shot which is determined more um, on accuracy of distance control, then yes, it's, it's, potentially you're going to be hitting it a little bit softer. It depends okay. on the golfer, but more often than not, we'll see that you'll be less intent on smashing the dimples off the golf ball, okay. for instance. Well, let's hit a shot then, Pierce. And, uh, well, again, I just want you to pay attention with how Pierce finishes here, how his uh, body moves through the shot, and you can see there how he finishes. The butt end of the club is pointing now behind him. Nice control flight there as well. So, I mean, you can see that there. If we just take a look at those on screen here mm. now, we'll see the difference between the release pattern on the, the long line. We can see the club face closing through the hitting area yep. quite aggressively there. You will do that a lot anyway, <laughs> Pierce. Yeah, and I do that on a putt. <laughs> <laughs> and with a short time, we'll see how much more stable that is. And if you can look at the difference in the, in the finished position on the two there, quite different. So that is the difference between long and short. A few mm. differences in setup. There are. And a few differences in the golf swing. So make sure you have a go at that and, and test that out. It's really going to help you. We hope you enjoyed the video. Now also make sure, a lot of people ask us, how can we get coaching from you two? Well, we've created meandmygolf.com, which is a platform where we have numerous coaching plans where we actually take you week by week through different things to actually help your game. So make sure you head over to the website and check it out. We've got thousands of members who are all improving their game on a weekly basis. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.